Former President Donald Trump is appealing the Colorado Supreme Court's decision that he's an insurrectionist who cannot be on Colorado's presidential primary ballot. Yeah, so this morning we have our nine news legal analyst Whitney Trailer in studio to break down what this could mean for Trump and his team. Whitney, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you both. So first of all, what are Trump's legal arguments on this appeal? Well, there's five primary arguments, but I'll go over two or three right now. But the first one is that the president that uh, is not an officer of the United States. And so in the Insurrection Clause, Section 3 of uh, the 14th Amendment, it, it mentions these different offices, but it doesn't mention the presidency specifically. And so they're making this sort of technical argument that the president is not an officer of the United States. I think that's a weak argument. And they go into it a little further and they say, look, this clause says that they take an oath to support the U.S., but the presidential uh, oath says preserve, protect, and defend. So they're actually looking at the specific words that are used within the Constitution. Mm -hmm. They're also saying, look, this wasn't an insurrection. This was, you know, just a, a melee, whatever you want to call it. And then finally, the proper process is impeachment. So that should have happened in the Senate. So those are the primary arguments. Some of them, I think, are a stretch, but uh, still the court is being asked to do something very significant. So um, he, he has that going for him. Yeah. This is just one of several cases involving Trump and the U.S. Supreme Court yes. waiting to make some decisions, right? That's right. So this, so you have this one, and then, of course, the case in Maine, but mm -hmm. that's still going through the state system. So it's going through the state. It'll go to the state Supreme Court, and then presumably they'll file a writ to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. There's also nobody's talking about the E. Jean Carroll case where he was found to have um, committed this rape. And since then, he was making defamatory statements. So he's supposed to go to trial on January 16th or 19th on that case, but he's filed an appeal with the, um, with the U.S. Supreme Court saying, which they haven't accepted yet, saying, I have presidential immunity. And that's the final case, which is the one with Jack Smith, the prosecutor. Now, that one's in the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. And there, I think that one is fundamentally important because the argument in that case is, does a president have blanket immunity? And that's really what he's arguing. And so if the court says, yes, the president has blanket immunity, all of this stuff essentially goes away. And what's happening in that case is it's scheduled to go to trial in March. So Jack Smith is pushing to have this trial go in, in March. Former President Trump wants to delay it because if he can delay it till after the election and he wins, he'll be able to pardon himself on those federal charges. So there's a lot at play there. But that immunity case, I think, is going to be very important. And all of these cases are important because the Supreme Court will finally decide this. You have all these different states ruling in different ways. Yep. That's the purpose of the Supreme Court accepting writ. Because you have to remember, Supreme Court accepts very few cases. There's over a thousand writs filed every year. And they accept just a handful, less right. than 100. Yeah, with about 45 seconds left, okay. I want to ask you if any of the justices are going to have to recuse themselves in this case involving the primary ballot. We're seeing House Democrats saying that Clarence Thomas should be given right. his wife's stance uh, with and support for Pre President Donald Trump. Well, that's a great point. And, and some people have said to me, hey, well, these uh, appointments that were appointed by President Trump, aren't they biased? That's not enough. Just because you were appointed by the president, they're hopefully going to maintain their objectivity. But Clarence Thomas is completely different because it's well known that his wife was involved in uh, the January 6th, um, you know, part of the planning or discussions and things like that. So her involvement, I think, definitely taints um, Clarence Thomas. Now, of course, they're saying, well, this is my wife and we have this, uh, you know, separation. I don't discuss my cases with her. But that is a strong argument to, to potentially argue for recusal. Mm, we'll see what happens. Whitney, as yeah. always, thank you so much for coming in. Sure. Good to be here.